I praise you for the honor it is to be your child, and we're glorifying you for the night. I do praise you for all that you've done in this church. You've just been so good to us. We don't deserve it. Lord, as I consider what's going on right next door with the ladies group and what's going on with the children, how you're working already in hearts, and Lord, what might take place in the nursery. Father, in every area of this building tonight, I'm just going to ask that you'll have your way, that you'll have your being fulfilling all that you want to fulfill. Father, we consider that if you are not allowed to fill us, we're done. We might as well give up. We might as well stop right now. And so, Father, go to hearts right now in this room. Go to hearts in this group of ladies next door in the office. Go to hearts in the group of children and teenagers that are working together to honor you and give you the praise, the college kids. And, Lord, just work in them. Work in the teachers. Work on my wife. Father God, work in my wife as she teaches. Work in us here in the auditorium. Father, we're asking you, we're inviting you to take over. Not to be a part of things, not to accompany us, but to lead this. To lead this, to take over my body, to take over my spirit, to take over my soul. To be glorified in every soul, in every body, in every heart. Father, won't you break hearts right now? People have the liberty to get on their knees or to cry out to you or to pray to you or to get with you in some way. Lord, may that be the case. Father, tonight we want you to be glorified. And that just simply can't happen if we try in some way to manipulate things. We just just decided, Father, to let you have it. Have it all. Have the whole church. As you did this morning, you had the whole church. And you were glorified. I pray you'll do it again tonight. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brother Richard, why don't you guide us through just introduction time, won't you? Good evening, First Back. <laughs> Can we try that again? Yeah, more, go people, ahead. more people here than two. Right. Good evening, First Back. Good this evening, Brother Richard. <laughs> That's a little better. Thank you, Brother Richard. Everybody's still too sleepy from today, right? <laughs> Are there any um, visitors here, first time people here today? Raise your hand. Nobody first time. Bev, Nobody? I'm so glad you're here, Beverly. Okay. Praise the Lord. There was a song that we did at the other church. Remember Heavenly Sunlight? Do you know Heavenly Sunlight? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that as we go around and shake hands. Sunlight. Oh, it's got, is it all in the hymn book, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Might be. Hey, Keith, was that in the hymn book? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you can do it Acapulco. Yeah, do it Acapulco. There you go. Here we go. How you doing, Cindy? I'm so blessed by you. I'm so blessed the by you, Walking you in sunshine all of my journey over the mountains. That tune doesn't sound good. <laughs> you got to do the verse. You got to start the verse. Walking in sunshine. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All of my Don't worry about it. <laughs> How you doing, Dwayne? Good to see you, man. <laughs> I'm loving it. Praise the Lord. God's love you. <laughs> Heavenly sunlight. Flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. Man, we're going to have to get that up on the screen sometime. That's a good little ditty, isn't it? Oops, I just spit out my mint. All right, I spit out my mint tonight. Okay, hey, Keith, take over, all right? I'll pick up my mint off the floor. Maybe you can do better. By Savior's love. Oh, I love this one. I stand amazed. Let's do this one, man. Praise the Lord. I don't care about the germs, do you? 348. 348. <laughs> uh, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wonder how he Yeah. Oh, marvelous, how oh, wonderful. 
wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Glory, yes. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own. That's good doctrine, yes. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. died alone. Oh, yes, amen. How marvelous, how wonderful in my song shall ever be. How wonderless, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. On the land. When with a ransom in glory his face I at last shall see. Will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Right, before we do that video, have a seat for just a second. Let me tell you, if you came in and you're wondering about the ladies' class, it has already started. It always starts right at 6 o'clock, and it's over in the office right next door. So you can go through that door and go right in there. It's okay if you go now. There's no problem at all. But watch this video. This is a good one. Go right ahead. Hey, if you're watching this video, you may have questions about prayer. Questions like, what is prayer? How does it work? Why do we pray? Is there a right or wrong way to pray? Maybe there's a particular situation you're looking to pray for, like prayers for healing, prayers for help, or prayers for guidance. Whatever's brought you here, I want to encourage you that prayer doesn't have to be complicated. We don't need to clean up our act, kneel in a certain position, or say the perfect words in order to get God's attention. Right. Simply put, prayer is talking to God. It's like having a conversation with a friend. But this relationship wasn't made possible without the sacrifice of Jesus. When we surrender to Jesus, He serves as a mediator between us and God, Amen. interceding on our behalf. Yes. God created us to have a relationship and connection with Him. And so, He sent Jesus to make that connection possible. Amen. Now we can talk to God about whatever's on our minds and whatever situations we're going through. And not only do we get to, but God wants us to. God wants to hear your thoughts, fears, frustrations, and thanksgiving. You can come to Him with it all. The Bible says, the Lord is near to all who call on Him. So go ahead, call out to Him and tell Him what's on your mind. And if you still have questions about prayer or wanna know more about how Jesus' death is relevant to you as you're seeking prayer, I want to encourage you to connect with us. Simply click to start a conversation and we would love to talk with you. Amen. We look forward to connecting with you soon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as the men come forward for our tithes and offerings tonight, um, that's a good question about prayer. Have you prayed about what God would have you to give? Of course, there's always the 
10% of your gross income, that's always a given, but anything above, have you prayed for it yeah. about it? Let's uh, read real quick Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 through 21. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Brother Brad, do you mind praying? What a great text. Amen. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, and indeed we are grateful again for the opportunity of honoring you through giving. We pray your blessings upon the revenue that's received, Lord, mm -hmm. that it will be used for the advancement here in this local fellowship and through the missions outreach and around the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, make sure you guys get next door, too. Give it. Before you start, man, I, I'm going to mess you up here. This right here is inaccurate. You know that? I don't know how to change it, but it's, it's like that, okay? I'm serious. After today, it is about 102,800 102, or so. So I'm just overwhelmed by that. Are, are you amazed by God? Are you amazed at what he does? I mean, praise the Lord. Okay, go ahead, Keith. I just had to say that. I just had to say that. I'm looking at this and saying, this isn't right. <laughs> I'm going to make it right. I'm going to make it right. Stand. <laughs> Bless the Lord Almighty. 356, 356. Redeemed. Are you redeemed tonight? Redeemed, I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Redeemed, so happy in Jesus. The language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me does continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Amen, 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 amen. You sound like a bunch of redeemed people, praise <laughs> the Lord. Let's go ahead and 
sit for the rest of the evening. Okay. Unless we <laughs> sing another song in the middle of the message, whatever. <laughs> but for now, we can sit. It's not unheard of. Did everyone? <laughs> does everyone have a bulletin tonight? Did everyone get one for the week so that they know what's coming up? If you didn't, you can put your hand up, and we'll get one to you. Miss Saber is ready for you as usual. She's our go-to bulletin gal. Praise the Lord. The give Bunky. We one. looked at that. We got those one. things from this Anybody morning. Else? Our youth rally, be praying for that. Next bulletin? Sunday, we're going to have snacks and fellowship activities. Harvest parties coming up. There's sign-up sheets for all the missions, conference stuff. The harvest party is the first night of it. It's the kickoff for it. So be getting involved in that, seeing what can happen. We can get If we can help you in any way, of course, you can ask details. Any of us staff, me, Dad, yeah. and others. And... Uh, Outreach this week, I mentioned that this morning. That's always Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4, Saturdays, 10 a.m. is a great time that we have. We get, to, we get a lot of opportunity to reach people we'll, we've never met and probably will never see again. <laughs> but it's, that's the whole point of it. Reach the people that, you know, if we never had done that, we would, we ne they would have never gotten the opportunity. We never would have given them that chance. And so we're just fulfilling God's call on our lives for that. Uh, are you, we're going to have this night, but the youth, of course, are going to be away for that. They'll be at the youth rally. And the, uh, if you want to get involved in snack, let me know. If there's snacks and such, the, make sure you wish Jack a happy birthday. And then Ms. Megan, send her a text. Yeah. And then, uh, our missionaries, you heard about those. I hope you'll get, you'll remember, if you forgot, like me sometimes, that there's a uh, uh, missionary letters and to pray for them, you'll want to be getting a, a list. Yes, brother. Wow. Oh, and today is Miss Lily Rust's birthday. Wow. Send her a good, a happy birthday text. Yeah, or, or get with her after the service. Right. Yes. And today, awesome. <laughs> All right, so those are the things happening uh, this week. Oh, Tuesday, I, I, we don't mention that a whole lot. Tuesday, join us for prayer this Tuesday, 7 o'clock. That is a wonderful time that we have here. It's a whole prayer service. It's different from Wednesday because it's just completely prayer, and we really need that. So be, doing, be, be challenged to do that this week.
just love that, don't you? Don't you love it that God gave people gifts? You know? Bunky, you've got a gift. You really do. It's, it's a special thing when someone enables somebody to speak in front of people. Have you ever thought about that? Jason, you're preaching tonight, right? Aren't you? No? Oh, okay. But God gives gifts of all kinds. You know, it's a gift, Keith, to do what you did this morning. I'm telling you, I, at the end of that one song, I was in glory. <laughs> but God used you to bring us to a point. Do you understand that you are you, as we talked about in the message this morning, because of the grace of God? And he's got a plan to utilize every single one of you. Adam, sometimes I bet you say, think, I wonder what my biggest and deepest gifts are. Dude, you got them in spades. They're laughing at you in there, by the way. Uh, you, you got them in spades. I mean, you guys have got gifts galore. I want you to look tonight. We're going to look at Matthew 24. Look at Luke chapter 1. Look at Matthew chapter 1 as well. But uh, as you're getting ready to do that, I would like to have the Cokers on our missions team. If you would like to have the Cokers on our missions team, the Chinese missionaries that came in Wednesday blew our minds. I heard them on video. You guys got to hear them live. I was just amazed by the gentleman. How about you guys? It, you know, and the thing is, it was nice about him. I, I love all of our missionaries, but lately, can I be? Can I just, you know, just tell you something? It's not a criticism, but sometimes missionaries are like Pastor Barry. Pastor Barry gets to thinking about uh, so many things that he forgets to look around and praise the Lord. Any of you ever had that problem? <laughs> Get to think about it. so many things we forget to look around and praise the Lord. And Brother Coker came in and he said, praise the Lord for that. That's amazing. And then he's looking around and he said, praise the Lord for this. My, my staff kept saying, he'd go around and just say, I'm just floored. I'm so blessed by what God's doing at First Baptist Church. And what does that do? Well, he probably does that in every church, okay? But it's encouraging. It is encouraging. Tell me if you don't like it when somebody just says, hey, all that work you put into that was for, was for something. It wasn't for naught. And that was really a blessing to me. Okay. Does anybody have a reason we ought not to take him on? Okay. Let's go ahead and vote. Put your hands up if you will, if you're all set for it. One, two. Are you not set for it? Three, four, five, six, seven, nine. If you didn't want to, I can understand. But. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and my mom and dad, where are they? Oh, I, I did get you. Where's dad, Where's mom? Oh, she's over there with all the other reprobates over there. They don't love us. They don't care about us. Did you know, did you hear the last one that I said? Roberta? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> you want to do it again? <laughs> okay. Is anybody opposed? Eddie, are you opposed? No. <laughs> okay. It's up to you if you want to be. All right, here's the deal, you guys. Let me just tell you a couple of things that are going on. If you didn't get a scorecard this morning for the campaign, just check around, and you'll see a wall that explains everything, all right? Right there on the exit to the building, on my door, over here at this door, in the social hall door, you'll read things like this. You are on the yellow team. Those on the yellow evangelism team are active in, and then it tells people what they're active in. And the same is true for the green preaching team. Same is true for the blue intercession team. And same is true for the red contact team. It will tell you what contact does, what evangelists do, what preachers do, what intercession does. And all of these, of course, you realize if you're on the preaching team, sometimes you're not actually up in the pulpit, right? Sometimes you're back there. Sometimes you're working with the video. Sometimes you're listening, but you're involved in some way, security and that kind of thing also with contact, I believe. Now, 
Here's what I, I want to say before I get into all of that. Have we decided that we're going to pray for this missions conference? Yes, sir. Have we? Okay. A lot of people this morning made that commitment. I thank the Lord for it. If you weren't here this morning and you say, you know what? I will pray for October 16th to the 18th. I will pray for October 14th, which is that Friday for the Harvest Festival, which will actually be the kickoff for the week. If you weren't here this morning, you say, Pastor, I will make that commitment. The way the Lord directs me to do, whether it's every day or every couple of days or every week, if it's an hour every day or if it's five minutes in the morning, I will pray as the Lord directs me to pray about the missions conference, about the needs of the missions conference, about the involvement, the Harvest Festival, all the things that are going on. Who would say, I will do that, Pastor? Slip your hand up if that's you that knew people. Okay, good, good, good. Several that weren't here this morning. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Marilyn. And by the way, thank you double, because I'm going to announce it now. Marilyn has decided to cater the entire last evening meal that Wednesday. And her company is taking care of all of those costs. All right. Yes, go ahead. That's fine. We love you and thank you so much for that. She is going to do a whole menu like she usually does. And I'm sure that she'll make my favorites like she usually... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we hope and pray. Whatever it is we know is going to be good. Then it'll be an exciting time that last day. But I signed up to bring pizza. Bring it Tuesday or bring it Monday. All right, that na last night we're going to have a nice knockdown, drag out meal, okay? A great buffet style meal that she's going to provide. And then on Sunday night, there's a buffet style international surf and turf dinner at five o'clock. And you guys are already praying about all of that. Before I get into that, can I get someone to look into helping with doing the lighting along the walls as we were talking about? What it would be is some kind of runner lights up towards the top, all along our, here, and then just something that kind of deflects it up so that it comes across the ceiling, okay? Uh, and just brings more light into the sanctuary. You know who will thank you for that? Jeffrey O'Day will thank you. He has a hard time seeing in this auditorium. He said, if there was just a little bit more light, Pastor, it would be so much more pleasant in the auditorium. You know who else will thank you? Susan O'Day will thank you. You know who else will thank you? Bev Ruark will thank you. There are a lot of people who have trouble seeing. And because of just the dimness in this room, uh, we'd like to see that happen. Are there some people, two or three guys, that might know a little bit about electricity and may know a little bit about carpentry of some kind or uh, metal work that might help with that project? Slip your hand up if you will. Okay, I'll mention it again later. And those of you who want to talk to me privately, that's always seems to be how it is. A lot of times people want to talk to me privately, and I'm fine with that as well. But I wanted to mention that is a great need, and I'd love for you to help with that if you can. It's a very simple project, really. It's something I could do. But I want to make sure that we all get involved, and I want it done in a way that probably isn't Barry Seacrest style of, you know, Jimmy rigging. You know what I'm saying? I, yes, very, very. Thank you, Brother Keith. <laughs> I didn't tell you this morning, the number one way to get homers in this competition for 2023 is guests, all right? Bringing guests means you'll receive an exclusive stamp. It's a unique stamp of the back of your scorecard. You know, the one that the, all the lines here, you just put in there guest and you put the name of your first time guests that you bring, and you'll get an exclusive stamp on that particular circle on the back of your scorecard that will enable you to get some exclusive rewards for yourself and your team. Okay, yes, Peggy. This starts next Sunday. So what this is, is the first quarter is basically a beta testing, a pilot, you could call it. We're calling it the rookie... Uh, what did we say? The rookie uh, season, rookie starting season. So for January, when it gets going, all of you will be veterans at how this goes, how it works, you know, for those three months. And if you are able 
to hit homers. I'll tell you all about it. Next Sunday is the opening rookie season. Evangelism team, wear yellow next Sunday, okay? Look at, look at, uh, look at uh, uh, Tracy. She's got a beautiful yellow blouse. On. It doesn't have to be a jersey or anything like that, but if you're on the yellow team, wear yellow. If you're on the green team, which is the preaching team, wear green. If you're on the uh, t- wear, wearing blue for intercession, the blue team, all right, FBC shirts are blue, right? So you could use your FBC shirt that day if you wanted to, all right? And then contact teams are wearing red. You look good, man. Look at, you are on contact, actually, aren't you, Danny? <laughs> Danny's on the contact team. Look, he's got his red on tonight. So any case, do whatever it is and support your team with your color and bring a friend to wear a color and you'll get extra points right off the bat, very first Sunday, okay? So what are the four services? Let's start with that. What are the four services? Sunday school, Sunday morning church, Sunday night, and Wednesday. Now, if you do that, what you're doing is what? You're going around the baseball diamond. You see how that works? So you get a home run. Now, if you, in a week, do a gold, which means a three-service week, then what is that? It's a triple. It's a triple, right. You get to third base. What if you get a silver week, which is just two services in the week? What is that? That's a double. And if you get a single, obviously, you're a bronze member for that particular week, okay? So if you go through the month and you average it all up and you end up being a silver, that's fantastic. Other things that you need to know is that heavy hitters, those who are here four times a week and attending regularly, get the most rewards, obviously. And the rewards include First Baptist Church mugs, foam fingers, pins, and themed pins, interesting little things that say things like Jesus is love, the truth is awesome, you know, things like this. And then pocket knives, hats, shirts, blow-up figures, candy and goodies, special toys, etc. for the kids. And bringing children also enables you to get children's things for those children. We want them to leave here excited and happy and thinking, man, I went to church and man, this happened and this was, you know, you know, there's nothing greater than a child that, can I tell you this? When I was in Uruguay, there was a little girl that, uh, that came to church and, and she confessed it to me. She just said, I only come for the candy. Said this all the time. I only come to church for the candy. And she'd tell me this all the time. That little girl grew up, all right? And at 18 years old, she said, I used to come for the candy, and now I'm going to be a missionary. And she went to Peru. She went to Peru from Uruguay, and she became a great, great, loving, sweet servant of God. Because of what? Because she rotted out her teeth as a kid at church. (laughs) Now listen, I realize that sometimes we think, well, people ought not to, don't we all? I mean, let's be honest, don't we all? You sit around and you say, well, if I treat my wife badly, the Lord's going to give me trouble. So, well, you just ought to do it because you love the Lord. But we don't, do we? We do it because dot, dot, dot. And so it's not just the young in Christ. It's all of us that need a little bit of encouragement now and then. All right? And then finally, there'll be discriminatory awards. The most promising player. The most improved player. uh, The most valuable players. Hall of Famers dealing with those who are our golden saints, those who are our older members. And it's just going to be fun. And the trips that you can gain also include baseball park tickets, Bible museum tickets, which we already have. (laughs) There's a credit, actually. We have a credit for the Bible Museum. And then sight and sound tickets will be the pinnacle of those who throughout the month, those three months, are faithful every service, bringing visitors, doing those folks that are in those top areas, they will get free sight and sound tickets. And you'll go and enjoy yourself there. And we've already even talked about bus, uh, doing like we did yesterday. Uh, That was phenomenal, by the way. How many of you went to that? It wasn't that incredible. 
I mean, beautiful, very, very nice trip. And I heard that the bus was just one of the nicest things about it. And so we talked to the same man about going to Sight and Sound for this particular trip. And we would do it for everyone. Some of you would be paying and some of you would win it to be able to go to the, to the uh, Sight and Sound. So uh, those are the things I wanted to tell you about. Hey, grab your Bible. Go to Luke, if you will, to start with. What a, what a glorious thing God is doing. Praise his name. Luke, if you will. The title to this message is simply, When Jesus Comes, Part 2. And there is a reason for that, okay? When Jesus Comes, Part 2. Get this in, in, in your head for just a second. Now, Abby, do you remember when you were a little girl? You remember when you were 8 and 10? Do you remember when you were 12? Do you remember when you got to be 13, 14, Cindy? Do you remember those years? Roberta, do you remember those years? A little? Yeah. <laughs> Sandy. Uh, hey, if you remember those years, Elizabeth, if you remember those years, some of those years were awfully scary for both young men and young women especially around the adolescent ages. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was some scary stuff going on around that time, right? Now get this for just a minute. Think about the Virgin Mary. What must she have been going through? Hey, Mary. <gasps> Here's this angel, all right? Mary. Blessed art thou among women. I'm, I'm what? I'm what? You, you're, wait a minute. Who are you talking? What are you talking about? Mary, blessed art thou among women. Now look at this conversation with me, if you will. You're in Luke, in verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. If you go back through and you look at Obed, you look at Boaz, you look at who it was that really was associated with Joseph. Now look at verse 28. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Okay, Abby, Tracy, as a 12, 13, 14 year old girl, Gabriel comes to you. All right, you're dealing with enough. Tell me if this isn't the case. You're dealing with enough in your life. And all of a sudden, there is an, an angel. I mean, you go out to get some water. It doesn't exactly say where this is, but she, she's seeing this angel. And she knows, listen, she knows it's an angel. And she says in verse 29, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation is this? And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Favor with God. What is unmerited favor? Grace. What does our Bible say about grace? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should... Now, here's what we get here. Mary was highly favored because she deserved it, right? Are any of us highly favored because we deserve it? <laughs> you know, this idea of deservedness. Isn't it crazy how our society has actually bought into that foolishness? I mean, they love it. They'll see it all over the television set. They see it in every forum. You hear it in school. You even hear it in church sometimes. I'm so sick to death of it. How about you? Look at verse 32. He shall be great. Who? Jesus Christ. This is interesting. As you're looking at verse 31, it says, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He's going to be, he shall be, listen, great 
and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. I love the way verse 32 reads. And I don't know if everybody believes like I do. I really don't. Uh, you know, I, I've thought about this a lot, and I wonder if people believe as much as I do that Jesus Christ is not just a person of the Trinity, but he is God. All right, now, I, I know everybody's like, well, we're Christians. We all believe that. Okay, well, yeah, but the thing that I wonder about is, do we get it that Jesus Christ on the cross was God on the cross? Do we get that? See, now, we're not talking about the Father. He called himself everlasting Father. He said, if you've seen the Father, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. This is what I want you to understand. I realize they're separate persons. I'm not going to try to muddy that water. But I don't want you to make Jesus Christ some demigod, okay? He's not a demigod. He is very God. Do you understand that? He is as much God as his father God. Do we, do we get that? So he's called, and this is what I want you to get. Look with me at verse 32 again. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the highest. He's called the son of the highest. He's called the son of God. Why? Because thou hast prepared me, Hebrews says, thou hast prepared me a body, Hebrews chapter 9, and you go on chapter 10, and you look through this understanding of why he has his body prepared for him. But who is it? Who is this? This is God, very God. Now look at verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, of his kingdom there shall be no end. Go down to verse 37. For with God, everything is impossible. Right? No. All right, read it out loud me, will you? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, we translate ourselves down to verse 46. Here you see in verses 39 through 45 the excitement of Mary. She's amazed by all of this. She gets it that Elizabeth needs to know about this. Well, Elizabeth, Mary rises. She goes to those days and went to the hill country with a haste into a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, get this, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Tonight, we've used that phrase several times, and it was on purpose. We've used it in prayer. We've talked about it some in the music. We've dealt with it in various strange and various ways, filled with the Holy Ghost. Abby, Edner, Pastor Michael, Eddie, tonight, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Can, can I ask you a question? What does that mean? Somebody just blurt it out. What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I believe that's the case. I really do. Can I be full of something else and still be filled with the Holy Ghost? No. Can I be filled with sin? Can I have my thoughts a hundred miles away from this message? And be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. See, the question here is, am I as Elizabeth was? Here in verse 43, it says, Whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then the meat of the message tonight really is only five minutes. Listen to this. When you get down to verse 46, Mary said, my soul does magnify the Lord. Can you say that with me out loud? My soul does magnify the Lord. What does this mean? You know, when I was a kid, I used to magnify ants. I used to take, I actually burned them, you know what I'm saying? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so with the magnifying glass, I actually wanted to see them burn. So I would, zzz, you know, zzz, 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 zzz. poor ants. And say, Pastor, is that really what you did as a kid? Yes, I was sick, just like a lot of kids are. <laughs> Sometimes they stamp on them. As little kids, you see them. 
<laughs> Let's just kill some bugs. And of course, the moms are all like, yeah, kill them all. Get rid of them. It's fine with me. I don't want any bugs in the house, around the house. It doesn't matter to me. You just go ahead and kill them. My friends, in this case, Mary's doing something unusual. And that is that human beings don't generally magnify the Lord. What we generally do is magnify ourselves. What we generally do is think about things that would satisfy me. Things that I want done. He says, no, I want to mag-. she says, I want to magnify the Lord. She says, my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Now, how do you do that? How many just every once in a while say, praise the Lord, bless God. You get excited, you say, oh, my Lord, my God, thank you, thank you so much. Oh God, I praise you. Most Sunday nights, and tonight will be one of them because today has been a phenomenal day. But most Sunday nights, I'm headed home. Bonky, tell me if this isn't how it is for you guys that are preachers. You head home and you just can't help it. You get to a certain point down the road and you're like, bless God, that was awesome. That was so awesome, God. You did marvels today. You worked on people's hearts. I saw hearts broken. I saw lives change. I saw people at the altar. I saw people in the pews. Just getting before you say, oh God, please change my heart. Make me to be. Now here's the problem. If your lifestyle doesn't lend itself to doing that, daily and multiple times a day, there might be a problem. You say, well, I don't do it with that kind of exuberance. Why not? That's just what I'm saying. If we aren't so excited about God and who He is and what He's done and the salvation, I will never... Brother Keith, tell me of that song, man. It's awesome. I will never burn in hell. I won't be there for 30 seconds. I won't be there for three minutes. I won't be there for 10 minutes. I won't see it. I won't ever know about it. I'm not going to hell. You know, I mean, you get excited about If that doesn't light your fire, quote unquote, (laughs) then maybe you need, I don't know, maybe your fire's wet or something. You know what I mean? We need to understand how valuable it is. To be able to glorify God in that way. Look at verse 48. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Behold, from thenceforth all generations shall call me blessed. How many of you just once in a while you think, I- I'm really nothing. I just, man, you know, all I do is work. I, you know, I look up there, the pastor talking about being excited and everything. I'm just down. I get depressed. I get bothered. Do you think I don't? Do you think any of us don't? Keith, tell me if being a postal worker isn't difficult. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine. Things that people do, farms that people work on, the way that people deal with multiple jobs. I mean, in this day and age, in our country, people are doing so many things. It must break them to be doing all that they're doing. You have value. Don't let Satan get into your ear and tell you that you're nothing. You are everything to Christ. He's interested in you. You've got a fingerprint that no one else has. Your eyes, your body, your whole aspect. Everything that is Adam will not be anybody else. And he wants an Adam in heaven. He wants a Chris in heaven. He needs a Sandy Rice in heaven. He desires for that need. I, you know, but I'm saying he loves us so deeply. He desires it. Verse 49. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. And holy is his name. Do we have that song? He who is mighty... I don't know. Is, it, is that what it's called? Yeah. He who is mighty. He who is mighty. Okay. Listen. Yeah. Okay. Listen to me. There's nothing greater than when Jesus comes into us and starts to help us understand who he is. There's nothing greater than him giving us a reason. A reason for life. 
for living, for being here. He gives us understanding, he gives us wisdom and help. And when he comes, I'm here to tell you something. It's going to be awesome. Go to Matthew 24. And with this, we'll close. Matthew chapter 1 gives his genealogy. And you can go and look at that anytime. I thought to go through some of it, but we don't need to. When you go to Matthew 24, in verse 36, it says, Of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. The reason that the message is this. When Jesus comes part two, is because part two is still to come. Jesus came, and I praise the Lord for that, but he's not done. He is not done. And the next time when he rules and reigns on this earth, I understand there's the rapture. I understand the seven years, but when he actually comes and rules and reigns on this earth, there's nothing you've ever experienced in your life that will be like what this world will be like. Did you find that hymn? He who is mighty has done a great thing. I'll tell you what. Whatever the last hymn is. Well, it's, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. It's, uh, but uh, that, that, that particular song is awesome. And I don't mind that we don't use that. We can use Jesus Saves for sure. But why don't you stand with me, my friend? Be encouraged. Don't let anybody tell you you're not important. Marry the handmaiden. The little girl. I mean, she'd just gone through changes in her personal life. All of a sudden, she's being told, hey, what's in you? She's like, already? Now? You mean it's already done? What's in you is conceived of the Holy Spirit. <gasps> what? I'm carrying Christ. What an incredible thing. Can I tell you something, my friends? All of you, if you've given your heart to Jesus Christ, are carrying Christ. And you know what that makes you, John? It makes you super special. It makes you all super special. You're carrying Christ. What an incredible blessing to think of. Sing with me, Jesus saves. This is such a good song. And the altars are open. I just...